October. I actually uh, didn't know if my phone would work or not because I've had my internet wobble out. You know when it pear shapes out? Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And also, I'm going to have to take my hat off to keep the wind out. So I've desperately got to get that muffler thing happening for the phone. And you can see I've got no glasses on because, ah, <laughs> oh, so weird. I've got a pair of sunnies for my work, uh, my work sunnies, which are my work bag. I have another pair of sunnies in another bag. Hang on, just going down this, uh, this thing, and I've got a bit of a, I've got a heel. Hang on, ouch, I've got a bit of a healing ankle. Um, basically, yeah, I've got three pairs of sunnies. One somewhere, my work ones are somewhere, probably in a work bag. The other pair are in my other bag and my third pair at the op shop on Saturday, or Friday, sorry. This lady who was trying on some clothes and put her clothes down the table accidentally took one of my sunnies with her. So anyways, I'm sunglass free at the moment and as you can see, it's a glary day. It's a bit of a windy day. It's a beautiful day. It's humid, oh, what is it, 27. It's 27 degrees at the moment. It's warm. As you can see, there's flies. As you can see, the river's coming down. But it's still beautiful. Still paradise. I do wish I had my uh, my sunglasses, but it's just how it is, okay? Um, what is it? It's 3.30 in the afternoon. I don't know if you can see the water. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful water. Mm, it's really, really nice. It's got a real nice temperature. I do have to be mindful there are some rocks, not rocks, but uh, hard and mud, or it's like hard mud that's almost like rocks. Sorry for the glare. So, the reason why I'm doing this YouTube live today, everyone, is because as I shared with you on my previous live, I need to inject energy into my YouTube channel and I need to honour, I don't want them splashing on me, hang on, I need to honour, oh, see I knew that would happen, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen, um, sorry I can't completely focus on you at the moment, I've got the dogs running around me in the water and I really don't want them knocking me over because my fern, I love it when I can just walk this river with them and not, and I just leave my phone in the car and I just walk the river and I jump in the water and I swim and I I can keep my hat on uh, so yes my YouTube channel is commitment okay um, well, look at that beautiful Sun coming up I don't know if you can see the reflection in the water it's just so beautiful isn't it anyways the point of the story is yeah injecting energy into my YouTube channel Keeping the conversation going around why this YouTube channel first started, which for those of you who followed me from the beginning, or those of you who want to go back to the original lives, you'll be mightily aware that this YouTube channel started when I was in a place of very deep despair, just broken beyond broken beyond broken. And what I didn't actually get to emphasize enough in my other days, YouTube channel was I wasn't a Christian back then, I, but now I am. So that's actually what I didn't get to finalise. So when I first said that, you can see the progress of me surrendering to God on a deeper level. I've always had a relationship with God, my own type of relationship with God. I'm walking through the river if you're wondering, isn't it? But any of you who are feeling a little bit, no, I don't want you to feel jealous, but this is just beautiful, you know. I don't know what the camera can see, sorry. Anyways, um, this is what I love about when the river comes down like this. We can actually walk the river. And we've got this for the next month or so, and then it's going to just be all sand. And there's little pockets of water. But at the moment, we can still walk the river. We've got the islands in the middle that uh, were underwater only a month and a half ago. So, yeah, I love it when it's like this. I, I love that this is my third summer, so I know what to expect. And then I've got my third winter coming up, so you get into the cycles. Really nice. And I'm getting to 
I know what this river's like when there's no water, so I know what areas now are. I know what to look for when there's water on top now. It's really cool, I love it. Anyway, see so that bit in there is really deep. That's where I would normally go swimming. But because I'm doing this YouTube live, I'll just focus on you guys. And what I am going to do is I'm going to sit up there. And what you'll find is that the dogs will start all of a sudden being very interested in jumping all over me and very annoying. But I'm just going to focus on sitting with my feet in the water so I can focus on what I'm saying. And then I'll... Oh, Alvin nearly got me. Very... They, they run all around me, see? when I, they get very excited. And see, this is what I'm trying to say. I'll put my hat back on for a second. This is what I'm trying to say I have to be mindful of, okay? See these little bits in the ground? What that is is really dried out mud. I don't know if you can see it. So they're really thick bits of dried out mud, but they sort of almost like, it's like that, but under the water. And really what happens is they're actually like rocks. So you can see the crevice in here. I don't know if you can see the crevice. So I have to be mindful. It's very easy to uh, trip in one of them. So anyways, uh, I'll sit up here so I can focus on you guys for a minute and then I'll shut the YouTube down and then just focus on my walk with the river. Anyways, point of the story is everyone, when I first started this YouTube channel, for those of you who are aware, I was in a very distressful extreme situation dealing with just a multitude of different scenarios um, and just to synopsize it really as a lot of you are aware well it took see in the beginning I wasn't even aware of most of what was going on and it was actually through the process the ensuing couple of months that I became more and more aware of what was actually really going on the more research I did uh, into narcissism and also the more time that went by and the more that I surrendered to God and the more that I became aware of the twin oh that's right I started learning more and more about twin I was always aware of the no not always but I've been aware of the twin flame journey for a very 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 long time since there's a bit of wind there I, I've been aware of the twin flame journey for a very long time when I was down in my Mount Lawley property, I started becoming aware of, you know, as I've explained in many of my previous YouTubes, I, I became aware of a dynamic that was happening between my husband and I, back then we were just lovers, um, and I was trying to make sense of what was going on. So I was being aware of the twin flame journey for a long time, and I thought, oh, we must be twin flames because of push, pull, run, chase, hot, cold, um, magnetism that just ah ah, ah gentle <laughs> no no uh, see shook all over me I knew that was gonna happen no Alvin's coming now for the, for the ah no see I knew that was gonna happen see don't you worry no go away see I knew that I knew they were gonna do that to me I knew they were gonna run behind me try to jump on me splash water no splash water all over me uh, Alvin yeah, right next to me trying to splash water on me. Anyways, um, I'll just show you the dogs for a minute. It's very beautiful. Are you ready? I'll just turn you around. No, space. Don't splash on me. No. Thank you. Woohoo! Yep. That's more relaxed. Now they're going to start running. Woohoo! And swimming. So basically, all right, I don't think they're going to jump on me anymore. <laughs> basically, um, I've been learning a lot, okay? I've been learning so much. I've been sharing most of what I've been learning on my YouTube channel, which I'm pretty sure is why God asked me to do this YouTube channel. And I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm, just just have to be mindful they're not going to bush me from behind so i've got this bankment directly behind me so they could come pounding down there at fast speed see come pounding down <laughs> and basically not hurt me but come very close <laughs> i try not to get scared i know they're not going to jump on me 
Anyways, the point of the story is it's been a bloody big journey, everyone. And um, I've learned a lot. And I've been trying to work out, uh, you know, since um, I think about April, March, April, about March onwards, like I've had lots and lots and lots of different messages from, I didn't know if it was from God. I thought it was from God. Then I thought, is it actually demonic um, messages? I, I just didn't know. After a while, I just started getting so confused. I thought, oh, I can't. I don't even want to decide, try to decipher the dreams and the visions anymore because I can't work out what's actually a God message, what's actually just my my wishful thinking in my dreams, but the dreams are becoming a daytime vision. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I, I just thought, no, I'm just going to, what I need to do, and I did get this message, just focus on the moment, focus on the day, focus on making a home, um, focus on just, you know, what you can do, and it's in the book. I was just getting lots and lots of information and lots of advice just to just to focus on the day-to-day -day living and, and also I had a winter to get through so that's real survival time up in the wheat belt. Winter's more survival time than um, summer. Uh, in the, 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 the farmers, summer's obviously way more intense for them. But I'm, <laughs> I'm in suburbia so I've got access to... Ah! See what I mean? It's actually quite scary. <laughs> they come running down that hillock very fast. So basically, um, winter for me is more extreme because, you know, how to get wood. Whereas the farmers probably have lots of wood. They're probably warm at night. Um, but summer for the farmers is really hard. But summer for me isn't as hard because I'm actually in... Uh, semi-rural suburbia and I've got access to the water mains and I'm not wasteful with water but you know and I'm not running a farm and I'm not running livestock so winter for me is much harder up here than summer uh, so I had to survive that summer I had to focus on survival and as a lot of you know I had financially I was struggling because I had a young pup I had a, a teenager big pup and a very young pup so I couldn't leave them alone so all of a sudden I had to go into so I had lots of financial issues I had winter coming up and I had a lot of heartbreak issues and blah 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 it's all very well documented and um, she's having beautiful fun and then basically what happened was you know that survival process was I was just doing day by day minute by minute hey oi space thank you And in that process, everyone, I really just got into a cycle, got into a swing, started saying yes to community activities, got involved in the theatre and, you know, got involved in the op shop and, you know, just, just, you know, just got a cycle happening, a routine happening. And I, got, and I started creating a life up here on my own. And as a lot of you know, on the 17th of July, I did a YouTube uh, live where I went out to one of the local pubs near where I live and actually got myself my first ginger beer. And I did that, going, here I am, a single woman in the bush and I need to accept it. I'm a single woman living in a country town so I might as well start doing the things I enjoy that I used to do with my husband and I might as well just start doing it accept the reality that I'm a single woman in the wheat belt, like I'm a single woman in a country town. So I did it on the 17th of July and it's really amazing because that was actually the beginning of a, of a experience for me up here. Like all of a sudden, it really was the turning point. It was actually apex, the pivotal point of my experience up here in the wheat belt changing from deeply grieving, um, separated you know husband run away no communication just left without bothering to communicate a few emails that i think someone else wrote a few texts that someone must have been editing and monitoring or whatever was trying to get brownie points for being as nasty as he could or whatever so nothing nothing no no conscious decoupling no respectful mature communication nothing about honoring no nice nothing about creating a clear cut adult mature separation and nothing about working on in a mature sensible common sense way dealing with you know shared assets shared expenses shared responsibilities that none of that was happening so 
I got to a point of going from deeply aggrieved, <laughs> aggrieved and grieving, um, betrayed wife, shattered and shell shocked, to a single woman who was married, uh, just making ends meet, just cleaning up a mess, like working out how to clean up a mess that I was part of creating, like, you know, part of why I'm up here and part of why I've got the life I've got is because I was saying yes to certain, um, saying yes to, you know, I said yes to moving to the bush, I said yes to marry my husband, you know, I said yes to this dream, yes to these adventures, and also, as I've shared with you other times, when we really needed some support and we needed to reach out and when when we actually needed some support, I wasn't saying yes to my need for support. Discuss this to the nth degree. I wasn't honouring my femininity. I wasn't honouring creating balance. I wasn't honouring me being a wife. I wasn't honouring my rights as a wife. Uh, I definitely didn't feel empowered as a wife or even as a woman or as a person. Uh, and then in hindsight with the police support and oh he had a stick in his mouth and with a lot of other people's uh, very valid information can you see them playing with the sticks cute eh? a lot of lot of uh, information and support from others you know had to accept the harrowing reality that I was actually in a psychologically abusive relationship and having to heal the reality that I had allowed it to get to the point it got to by not stepping up in my self honor for me and then I'm having to go through that whole process of learning how to really step up in my self love in my self honor you'll see all this in my YouTube channels it's been a very long journey it's been a wonderful journey it's been a highly empowering journey and what you see now is a healed very empowered balanced very godly like more godly than i was before because i had my own relationship with god before but now i'm using the parameters of the bible the parameters of my church the parameters of, of my churchly christian friends so it gives me some boundaries i've never had before i literally have grown up i've talked about this a lot too i grew up without boundaries i grew up without structure so I just want to show you how I'm being a hippopotamus. I just think it's adorable. Hang on a second. I've got to turn the phone around. Are you ready? <laughs> it's so cute. Um, can you see that little boy? Yeah, is it here? did you see him lying in the ground? He just lies there and just his head sticks out and he literally <laughs> looks like... Oh, hang on. Woohoo! Yeah, he literally... Uh, Zena? shake somewhere else please he li literally now she's gonna roll she literally looks like a um he sorry literally looks like a hippopotamus now look at this he's about to he's done stalk mode wait waiting for xena to pounce on him looking 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 waiting for the gesture that she's about to jump and pounce uh, waiting 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 and he'll go up high to counteract her and look at this she's just relaxed she's just very relaxed anyways um the, the the point of the story everyone is it's been an amazing journey and it's like exactly you know what's in the bible about when we uh get broken and humbled that's where we surrender and find god and god's carrying us jesus is carrying us during those times there's one set of footprints because we've been carried and following God's guidance and working with God's plan and all that sort of stuff is how I've been living. So I've just been living this last few months, just like day by day, uh, minute by minute, um, just routine, just, just, just gone. Okay. Just complete surrender. And the grief has uh, dissipated. Like it's still there. Of course. Like I had this deep, profound sadness for, uh, my husband never, ever, ever honouring or committing to the marriage. And, you know, it was a very painful reality for me when I realised that, realising he was so narcissistically abused and under so much... Alvin, that was really rude. <sighs> the, my back's really wet now. I don't know if you can see it. Alvin, that was rude. Um... 
Yeah, didn't realise it back then in the early days. Like, you know, if I'd known he was under so much control over these narcissists, I never would have married the man. Never would have changed my life from Mount Lawley and moved up to Northern. Never in a hundred years I would have said, you, you, you do your healing with your family first and, and the ex. You do your, you do your healing with these people that they've got so much control over you and you work out your self-love and your self-empowerment and then we'll consider having a relationship because there's no way we can have a, a relationship where if you've got five in the Oh my gosh, Zena! Good Lord! Go away! Go shake somewhere else! Don't worry, I was expecting it. It's annoying, but I think it's they're trying to include me, which I sort of understand because they're pack animals. Anyways, everybody, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. And then we've got the inevitable return. So for those of you who are in a similar situation to me, we've got the inevitable return of the damaged, narcissistically abused person. So when we really love someone and they're in our heart forever, and that person deeply loves us but blocked the love because they're so controlled, that person is under such a harrowing torment. They're, they're so tormented. They're in a living hell. They're actually in a living hell because they are so controlled that they are being brainwashed and puppeted and they do all of this stuff against their will. They're just doing it by a default learnt behaviour and like one word, one sentence, one action from a narcissist that's been in their life since they were children or since they were really young. So if you I put a lot of uh, links up about narcissistic scapegoats. So if you are married to or connected to or love someone who's a narcissistic scapegoat, you'll actually realise that that person doesn't have the ability to be fully present uh, in their life that they're, they're just so damaged they're so traumatized and they want to and what happens is they step up and they want to move forward but that moving forward brings up so much fear because it's such an uh, a, a, ter a, a, a territory a terrain it's such an unknown terrain something they'd never experienced before and then like me i was always wanting my husband to make his own decisions and just giving him the power to actually you know make his own decisions and he actually found that terrifying and then I would say you can do it you're quite capable in this situation and I realized in hindsight he was so fearful of actually being held being equally responsible and being held to account for being equally responsible because he was too used to being controlled and other people telling him what to do so this is all stuff I've learnt in hindsight, everyone. So what I am now, I'm such, I'm so learned on this process, and the inevitability of the return, the inevitability of of the of the reunion, the twin flame reunion, when when your twin flame comes back, and if they're a twin flame who's also a narcissistic scapegoat, you've got the extra trauma of 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 you know the the harrowing torment that they've been under not just for uh for them running away from you and ha the excruciating experience that it's been for them uh to be in separation but also their the absolute excruciating guilt for that they could be so weak so brainwashed so so you know so conjoled so pressured into doing the exact opposite to what their heart wanted to do but they actually didn't know how else to be. It was just too brainwashed. When someone's brainwashed and they just do what the default, what they've always done, when someone's got that much control over them, they actually knee-jerk reaction. By the time they realise what's really going on, the shame, the entrenchment, makes it even harder for them to fix up the problem. They don't know how to fix up the problem. It's just too big, too messy. Yep, and we can make excuses for them. We can forgive them. For it and we can make excuses for them but we still don't let them get off they must be held to account for what they've done but it's got to be done from a place of complete compassion um and in god's hands which is where i'm at like i'm at at a point where i've been given lots of feedback lots of advice of how to respond to the inevitable return 
and the inevitable return will be my husband in your situation it could be a child it could be a good friend it could be a sibling uh but when the twin flame returns to create reunion and if they are a twin flame who is also a narcissistic scapegoat and they've been under the control of narcissistic abuse we are going to be receiving a very damaged shell of a very broken human being and is not our responsibility to heal that person that's god's response ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's god's responsibility can you see the little bugger it's god's responsibility so we just put it in god's hands we put it in god's hands okay and oh we can talk about that in another youtube live but we literally put it all in god's hands we forgive them in god's grace and we let god do the healing through that person and we need to have our group our network of of trusted allies who are of our ilk authentic people if you haven't got these authentic people in your life do everything you can to get professionals by your side so that you've got advocates and one of the bits of advice i've been given which i shall be doing and i give you this advice as well video everything video everything so when your narcissistically abused very traumatized being twin flame returns into your life say just letting you know i'm recording this conversation so you've got complete proof of every single thing that happens because just be mindful that the narcissist narcissists when they lose control of their scapegoat they shall do anything and everything do not underestimate the levels of depravity and evilness and darkness that these people can go to that's my biggest form of advice to all of you uh, i've been given that advice from uh, legal people and also very trusted dear ones so i really hope you guys take that seriously i've also been prompted to how to go about it i've been prompted to when i have the somatic you know nervousness that maybe m might make my hands not work uh to the process of breathing the process of as albany so yep that's my 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 bit that i want to share with you all that i've had quite a few people supporting me and guiding me to prep me prep me and prepare me and you've got to get your network you've got to get your support network in place you've got to have the people lined up who you can ring immediately which is what uh, i've got there's a huge list of people that say you ring me immediately immediately so the first thing that we do is we send a text message uh, a group text message maybe pre-write the text message maybe pre-record it no, not pre-record pre pre-draft pre it or whatever you want to call it pre pre-type it pre-type the text and maybe even have your group lined up maybe even have it as i don't know if this is possible i think it is but maybe have your group text lined up and just press send because just be mindful that your heart rate's going to be up you're going to be sweating you're going to be finding it hard to breathe you're going to be finding it hard to get your fingers to work so keep it as simple as possible if you think you're not going to be able to do it have one person that you can ring to say boom I'll send this one person a pre-written text message and then you ring that person say send off all these messages immediately and then they will do that for you and then you've got your support team in place either praying and putting the power of Jesus' blood covering us with the power of Jesus' blood around us and or they turn up in person and pray whilst in person so my biggest advice to all of you that I have been, been given, and that's why I really want to share it with you all, is you're not alone. Do not deal with it alone. God wants us to deal with all pain and all traumas with our godly support team. God is who actually does the healing and God is who does the protecting but we are not to do it alone. We get our support team in place and then God works through our support team as well as through us. The power of three, so a minimum of three people 
and yeah we could go on and on about this but 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 take it seriously and please be mindful that you deserve this support network you deserve to have your support team in place and your protection your 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 human protection in place and but make sure they're godly authentic people they've got to be people who are living from their heart who are authentic people who uh have full permission people are not there for the drama if someone's there for the drama or if someone's being part of the problem you do not want them there at all that's just demonic energy you want them out of your life completely so that's my what well, i've got a lot of people uh supporting me uh to do and uh yeah it's, it's a quite an interesting process actually to realize oh i've really got to get a safety plan in place because the inevitability everyone is that everything eventually well uh unless someone dies unless someone actually becomes deceased gen generally there is a time of of I don't want to use the word resolution per se because sometimes these interactions aren't uh, the outcome isn't a resolution but generally there is a time of catalysm there's a generally there's a time of okay i'm just going to use my own words i don't i, I don't know how to say this because everyone's situation is completely different oh there's the wind again there's generally a time when god will allow or the limbo time gets to a point like there's generally a time of reckoning oh that's the word reckoning there's a time of reckoning okay so there's always a time of reckoning so and god does not let de devil energy prevail so god will allow the the lessons to be learnt god will create uh separation and god will create isolate not isolation wrong word uh the, the required safety measures when when there's people that have got too much demonic energy and god will actually you know create protection for us by removing the demonic energies the low density energies for for our healing for the others healing and for everyone involved healing and there will always be a time when with god doing that beautiful work but you need to be mindful that because we're all people of free will it can take time for some people to actually allow the healing to occur they might hold on with dear with dear um depraved trauma learnt behavior default um habits to hang on to what they perceive as safe or what they perceive as normal or what they perceive as uh, uh, uh what word do i want to use here it's a status quo type scenario it's like uh oh i know this i'll stick with this this i at least know <laughs> so sticking with the known even if they know that it's not at all good if it so basically there are plenty of people that will stick from a place of free will in a low density you know demonic energy like yeah you know, hedonistic small-minded you know fear based you know needing to look a certain way be a certain way belong to something what needing to be approved by these people that they know are not good for them but at least they know that dynamic blah 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 blah, blah. this is extraordinarily mm. common do your research do your research and do your research it's actually such a common dynamic and this unfortunately is what keeps people from truly surrendering to god when we step outside the unknown we step outside of comfort we must step away from fear we must step away from fear and we must stop running from blocking pain pain the gain of pain is imperative it's actually the process of what we gain in pain by facing the pain in godly surrender what we learn and experience in that is just astronomical that is the process of of heightening into our fifth dimension and beyond that is the process of becoming godly chosen ones who can do god's work not facing the pain actually means you're turning your back on your pain this is what our pastor was look at cute little zena Venus swimming i don't know if you can see her basically pain again in the pain was our uh the lessons of um pain uh we're doing uh, that's what we're studying at church at the moment <laughs> 
and the process of deep sorrow within your support network with your family network and family or and or friends loved ones who are godly trusted ones who are godly uh, doing your sorrow work in that process of of bringing your your network to support you but knowing it's God that does the healing so the humans can't do the healing with you they don't have the capacity but the humans are there to create the bare basic comfort like you know the water the hand on the shoulder the words of wisdom that God can and then God can work through these others to give a lot of information and 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 direction and and actions that that we needed from the God will work miracles through the others <clears throat> but the point of the story is everyone but the process of free will uh, when you're working with people that have a process that they have to work through they may take longer than you so I face my pain I deal with my pain I don't numb I don't go into numbing it out I don't run from pain I face it head-on and I work through really deep dark stuff really quickly like you can do it like the long way or the short way so someone could take six or ten years to do what I did in one month because they're using you know taking supplements to numb out or they're watching tv or they uh, are surrounded by superficial people who are small-minded and and you know limited in their viewpoints and limited in their they they see fear as weakness and they see speaking the truth and honesty as weakness and they see emotion is weakness and so you can't go deep with those people you can't have dnm whereas me nearly every single conversation i have with anyone is a dnm it's a deeply emotional very uh evocative very uh, uh, uh they're going to shake on me again so basically that's the point you've heard it all before i've been speaking the same 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 old same thing so when it ah, move. sorry <laughs> big jump where are they the little buggers bounced out of the water like really high about a meter and a half out of the water and like a killer whale orca like bounced out of the water and and as they're bouncing they're basically leaping towards me and yeah i got wet but more so than that i didn't want me land on but i know that knew they wouldn't but yeah they do it with quite poor sometimes anyways basically the point of the story is um uh, that limbo stage when another has their healing journey it's always going to get to a um what what did i use before a reckoning it always gets to a reckoning stage it might be on their deathbed it might be five minutes before they die everyone I, i'm not gonna lie to you we, we don't know god's perfect time. okay so two things one it's not god's will that someone takes forever to heal okay that's not god's will god wants us to heal like that but we're in a broken world surrounded by broken people low density people very demonic world we're in a very demonic world and a lot of people find the demonic energies to be uh, you know the placating comfort sort of zone and they stick with that and they they think oh this is easy this is fine i can deal with this and they're in a zim zimbo they're in a zombie limbo way of being And it is that person's free will when or if they actually let that go and just go into the reality, go into the actual true authentic experience and actually allow the pain to actually heal them and to actually ally with their shadow, do their shadow work, be broken, be humbled, allow God to come in and heal the broken, shattered being that we are allow surrender to the godly process of allowing deep healing allowing all the fears and the worries of the demonic satanical influences to be released when you're under the protection of jesus blood we are so secure we are so safe nothing can touch us there's nothing to fear the darkness is our friend that 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 shadow part of us is our pain that we need to actually accept and love and honor and in god's grace you know snuggle with and 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 give it the nurturance that it actually requires and listen to what it has to say it has a message it's hurting because it has a message it has something that needs to be heard that's all the shadow work is listening to the wounds in us actually allowing that wounded part of us to actually have a voice to actually be heard to actually be acknowledged that is all our shadow is and there are so many people that are so fearful that they'll do anything to block it including controlling others destroying others they don't care to what level they just 
destroy others. They don't care to what level they, they do rampant destruction because they're so fearful of actually listening to their wounds because they don't want to hear what their wound has to say because then they feel like they're weak. Well, you're not. You're weak by not facing your fears. You're weak by thinking you've got to destroy others and control others and be so nasty. That's weakness and that will never suffice. That's not sustainable. A damaged, traumatized, dark person has to constantly have others to inflict their control over or their darkness onto. They need others to actually justify their existence and to justify their perception, to justify their reality. And if they don't have that fodder, uh, in the, the psychological terminology, it's called narcissistic supply. If they don't have that ability to feed off others, weak, uh, I'm dominating you, aha, succeed in dominating you. Ah, there you go, I can justify that I'm a good person. I've still dominating others. I'm better than that person. I, I've got proof because I just made that person feel bad. You can only do that for so long. And after a while, there's no more fodder. And after a while, you're faced with your dark demons anyways. But it's worse than that because there's this war path. There's this aftermath of all this destruction. And worse than that, there's no true blue authentic support. There's nothing there, all alone, all alone. And then when they have to face that, that's usually when they S-U-I-C-I-D-A, yeah, yeah, S-U-I-C-A, I I can not even do that right now. S-U-I-C-I-D-A-L, S-U-I-C-I-D-E. Um, a very low density, demonically possessed narcissist generally takes their own life when they have exhausted their ability to control and dominate, when they lose all their power. When everyone starts to go, hang on a minute, nah, I don't want to be around you. Hang on a minute, nah, I don't believe your narrative. Hang on a minute, nah, I'm not partaking in that, blah, blah. When that happens, and it always does, it always does. These people always die alone. They always die with no love. They always die with no support, with no kindness, with no safety, with no comfort. They always die that because there's no one there that actually, actually when they die, people are relieved. It's like, thank the Lord that person is gone. So, but unfortunately, those people have got such a habit of being so controlled, they'll then look for another pattern to continue that there are a lot of people that stay in that same pattern for a very long time so please everyone if you are in a situation like myself and i've been meeting so many people that are empathic and kind and loving and and just genuine just genuinely beautiful people who attract narcissistic abuse because that's what happens we're like the light like the narcissists are like moths and we're the light and they're drawn to our light because they need it to survive they can't survive on their own because they have no light they're not allowing their own light to shine they could all they have to do is listen to the little cute little wonderful little wounded being inside themselves with love and kindness and softness and realize they're so beautiful and all they gotta do is listen to that cute little person inside of them and go oh my little one my little darling one okay i'm listening to you now and then they have to realize they've got nothing to fear they actually have nothing to fear they don't need to control that need to be dark and narcissistic and have demonic energy to get through life now they can let that story go and they'll actually be better off by just surrendering to all their fears and their wounds and just allowing God to come in and just inundate them with the love and protection that God is so desperate, <laughs> so absolutely desperate to shower them with. Uh, but God, if they're going to keep refusing God by free will, they're going to have the most horrendous life. And they do. They have very boring, vanilla or very anguished you know, lives where they just, oh, well, be me, well, be me, because they think they don't really have any real friends. Well, I, actually, they don't. Oh, well, be me. No one really likes me. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> they don't because you're not actually even showing who you really are. You know? And they go, oh, we're polite company. We're proper. We're all proper. But no one likes them. No one likes them. There's no authenticity. There's nothing real about these people. They're just caricatures. That's all they are. That's, anyway, very, everyone, be mindful, please. Free will. These people may never, ever, ever. For one, this is what I've been learning, for one single second of their whole life, they might not ever once feel a sense of true self-acknowledgement or true self-love or true self-honour or true self 
peace and this is the biggest tragedy of all and we can keep praying for these people but it's actually these people that by free will need to actually relinquish their fears face their fears not turn their back on their fears because when you turn your back on your fears which is what the pastor was talking about today you're exposing your back which means the devil can get in all sorts of energies can get in when you're exposing your back to your fears you're actually making yourself so vulnerable what a beautiful analogy is that but when you face your fears you can actually see what's happening you can deal with what's happening and yes everyone sometimes in those fears there is demonic energy sometimes those fears sometimes those wounds are not real they're just a narrative or a learnt behavior like the narcissistic scapegoat has a narrative of they're not good enough they'll never be good oh, it depends on the story that they were given but they're usually trained to believe that they're useless they're not good enough uh, they can't make a decision on their own. They, usually their self-esteem is being damaged to the nth degree. Now that is not a normal wound, everyone. That is not a normal wound. That is extraordinarily psychologically abusive. And that is why the more I learn about narcissistic abuse and the more I learn about narcissistic scapegoating, these people I found out the other day from Dr. Ramani are forever damaged. They've forever got trauma around it. Now, I don't know in 100% true if I believe that because I believe God can heal anything and everything. I don't know if Dr. Ramani is a Christian. But what I do know, she says, there's always that doubt. She says she'll always, she's, she's amazing. She's the most amazing, learned, narcissistic. Uh, 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 she's got millions of followers. She's doing amazing stuff in the world. And yet she shared the other day, I always have doubt that I'm not good enough because that's what I grew up believing. I always got told I was not good enough. I'll never amount to anything. And she goes, so I now just have to listen to that story. And when I... You know, my numbers are in the millions and my, my staff are saying, oh, you had however many million views on that particular YouTube. And she goes, ah, and she just has to go, ah. And the voice in her goes, not good enough, not doing good enough, um, not having enough of an impact. And she hears that voice and she goes, oh, there's that voice again. She goes, ah, okay. And then she listens to the fact of the numbers, but she doesn't actually believe it. And she shared that the other day. And I went, wow, that is so sad. And she was nearly crying when she shared it. And I thought, I think I posted that link. And that made me realize the damage of when someone's been a narcissistic scapegoat or when someone's grown up in a narcissistic family, those of us who have not grown up with narcissism, we can't comprehend the level of brainwashing these people have been under. And this is what I've been trying to share with so many people. We, 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 we free thinkers, we, we got beautiful big hearts mm -hmm. that haven't been damaged like we've been damaged by other forms of abuse but we've never actually had our identity brainwashed like I've never been brainwashed I've never been indoctrinated I've never been brainwashed um I've never had someone trying to tell me I mean in my life growing up <clears throat> I'll be really honest in my life growing up <clears throat> one of my sexual abusers used to try to um silence me and that's a normal thing that a perpetrator will do because he didn't want me talking about <clears throat> the abuse so <clears throat> for example when I was a kid I had a stutter and when I used to try to say something he'd go what's the square root of nine Martha mouth what's the square root of nine Martha mouth oh, I can't answer that simple question can you what's the square root of nine Martha mouth and he would say that three or four or six times in a row and I'd look at him going what because I didn't even know what a square root was. It's a mathematic term for those of you who don't know. Square root of nine is three. Okay, so, but back then I didn't have a clue what this guy was talking about. <laughs> I just remember going, what are you talking about? And then I just remember going, and he kept saying that over and over and over again to the point where I just would walk off going, I don't know what he's doing. And But I realised as I was growing up, he was just trying to make me because uh, sometimes I'd try to talk and I have a stutter and I couldn't get the word out and then he would slam me down shut me down I mean I've had a lot of mocking okay I've been I've had a lot of people try to mock me in public and put me down in public but that is not being brainwashed that's not being indoctrinated and we <laughs> Zena's got she's she's got grass seeds sticking out of her everywhere I've got to get them off her but basically the point of the story is us who have not been narcissistically abused I mean I've been experiencing narcissistic abuse in the last however many years which the police and a few other legal people and some very learned people have been letting me comprehend that the, the the damage of being narcissistically abused is i'm sorry psychologically abused i've 
I've been subjected to psychological abuse, which is how and why I got to a point where I started losing my mind and going insane and you know, I started getting to that point of self-harming and, and just became a zombie and lost my ability to laugh and lost my ability to sing and lost my ability to have fun and, you know, lost my ability to be me. And it, uh, 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 gentle, gentle, gentle. And then it took, it took a while. It took a long, 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 long time for me to actually... Oh, ow, burn! Sorry, he just shook all over me again. God, I hate it when they do that. So rude. Look at him. I shook all over you. I'm proud. And there's a little Xena Beena going, I'm going to shake on you next. I'm going, yeah, right. Anyways, my phone's about to go flat, which I'm actually really glad about because <clears throat> 50 minutes and 32 seconds. It's such a big topic, everyone. Pardon me, we are going to keep talking about this. I'll tell you why. The inevitable... What did I say? Reckoning. The inevitable reckoning. The inevitable reckoning. Okay, some people will never get it. Some people will never get the reckoning. The person dies and there's been no clearance or closure or blah, 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 blah. Yes, we do need to accept that. If you're a twin flame and the narcissistic, the narcissistic scapegoat has been off being horrendously, you know, in that maggot cesspit of learning that they've got the depth of their shadow work that they've got to deal with to really release themselves to really move up to that 5d high frequency godly inspired destiny living in that everyone there will always be a reckoning there will always be a resolution so in that if you are someone such as me you know you you've got a beloved in your life who is extremely traumatized and doing a lot of healing and through their own willpower will eventually get to the point especially if they're in our prayers if we're if they're in our godly prayers and god is actually clearly letting us know that we must be coming from a place of forgiveness and showing us how to forgive and for me how i'm being shown to forgive is to completely release it to god i have been shown that my 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 <clears throat> my all of my human responses of all the disgustingness that's been going on and you know just we're talking about really deep level dark macabre lying we're talking about next level uh, what i think you call it gaslighting next level uh you know like oh my gosh like we're talking about such dark 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 nasty 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 stuff if you like me are dealing with this we had a lesson in that that we needed to learn now god doesn't necessarily want us to be having a hard horrible life but god will turn every when we surrender to god god will turn every single demon inflicted tragic tragedy into something that hones us and 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 upon our free will helps us become more of god's chosen one and steps up into our path which is what my YouTube channel is all about. And me accepting my beautiful friends. I, like the, the level of authentic friendships I've got. It's, about, it's getting really cold now. And the other thing that I want to share with you. Sorry, hang on. I'm just, I've just got to get up. Ow. Oh, I've still got an injured ankle. It might take another couple of months to heal apparently. Yeah, it's going to rain. Anyways, just what I want to share. Hey, can you not? Sorry, she just... Ouch. Ooh, it is raining. Off to the car. Off to the car. Okay, what I might do... Ow, 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 sorry. Just, just, that's my ankle. I'll just show you the sky. Isn't that beautiful? It's starting to rain. And I thought, yesterday it was so humid all day. It was this hot, humid weather. And the sky had a purpley grey colour. Uh, today it's been grey, 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 and now it's actually raining. Interesting. And tomorrow's going to be 27, and the day I'm working tomorrow and um, 
Tuesday as well. Actually, my boss said to me, he needs me desperately on Monday, and he says, if I need you for Monday, and if, you really, if your ankle can't handle it, don't do Tuesday, because I'll the Tuesday jobs he can have a Tuesday and Friday and I went oh wow thank you he says I'm you can't keep aggravating your, your ankle you've got to get that ankle I've got to rest it so boring I must say <clears throat> I, have, I have to rest my ankle so much it's ridiculous it's been nearly three weeks now but yeah but they also take time it takes time when you roll an ankle if you roll it bad anyways everybody just I get get the gist of what I'm talking about in the surrendering to God, you know, as I keep talking about, this is my life, the river, my dogs, uh, and in that process, uh, this daily existence that I have, I'm creating routine and a life and always surrendering to God, always going to God first. So basically, in church today, he, he's saying you either go to comfort or to God. You've got to go to God first. Don't go to comfort. You go to God first. So if it's if it's an easy way out, if it's the comfortable easy way out, you just bypass the lesson. You bypass God's blessings. So we're in a broken world, and there's a lot of stuff happening in this world that's not okay, not good. And our way to actually survive that. Our way to actually utilise every single one of those experiences and turn anything that the broken world might throw at us, the only way, the only way, the only way to actually have that experience be to our benefit is by surrendering to God first and no, not running to comfort. So if anything resembles comfort, don't go there. Don't go there because all you've done is stayed small. You've stayed in, ugh. trust me, the demonic energies look really comfortable and they look really habitual and they look really status quo and they do, they just keep you small. They keep you small. They keep you limited. They keep you inauthentic. They keep you not focusing on your full potential. They keep you focusing on not honoring God's full blessing and full reward and full destiny for you. You're blocking God's promise. You're blocking God's gift by staying small and by staying in comfort zone. So if you are dealing with someone who's treating you terribly and doing awful things to you, put that in God's hands. 